Thank you very much, Joey. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce you and Aidy, the founder and CEO of our metric, as our keynote speaker today. Uh, Ewan has a strong connection to Edinburgh. He studied computer science here before moving into the field of bioinformatics. Uh, as part of that, uh, uh, working on something called Postgenomic, which is a blog post aggregator. He developed the original ideas uh, and took them forward into what is now Altmetric. Uh, so Altmetric is um, a company that provides tools and services, including Altmetric Explorer since 2012. They really look at article level metrics. How do we understand how to give credit for some of the non traditional outputs like blog posts, um, articles, and so on <coughs> in academia um, and beyond? So I think uh, I can't think of a better person to keynote um, for this the software and credit collaborations workshop. Uh, and so um, I hope you will uh, listen, enjoy, and ask questions afterwards. Thank you. So our metrics is a uh, field that, I mean, we've been around for a long time, and metrics in general is just looking at research outputs and what people are saying about research outputs. The phrase was going in 2010, and really you can trace your origins back to this talk, this is our metrics manifesto. You can find it online, it's our metrics store. And it was written by a postgrad, a PhD student, rather, in uh, North Carolina, studying information science, called Jason Cleave. You know, you can go sign it as well. And it, and it really talks about how research is increasingly moving online. Right? So we, if you think about articles to begin with, we produce articles in Word, we pull in references from uh, places like Mendeley or, or Centrelight or YouTube, this kind of thing. And then we get published, we go from an XML workflow, they get published online, and then people talk about them online as well. Well, it's a huge insight. So if all that's happening online, Manifesto reasons, then it's leaving traces and you can pick up those traces. And could we do something interesting? So, the manifesto really focuses a lot on discovery. If you read it now, it's a bit out of date, I would say, but uh, it talks about you know, using these traces as a new filter to help people figure out what they should what, what's the output that they should be paying attention to. But increasingly, I say, it's becoming more interesting for assessment, and that's really why it's there's a lot of different versions involved, so we're, our metric is one. Uh, in fact, stories of company that Jason Green, one of his previous founder, uh, from analytics, and I'm also about the widely services company in the US, and across from cloud data science. If you've been to one of their articles, you've seen our article metrics have uh, sort of information about who's talking about the article this year. So Plus also invests quite heavily in our metrics, so they don't have to just do uh, the PPC uh, 
open source software. So when we talk about electric, we just talk about that's what I most familiar with, but we say the whole truth for it. So I don't know what we're trying to do, fundamentally missions that help researchers get credit for their research. That's the idea. But when we talk about credit, so the immediate question is what do you want credit for? And different people care about different aspects of the research. So this could be a book, it could be an article, it could be a piece of software, it could be a data set, it doesn't really matter. What's important is this, uh, it's, it's not correct to simply look at one kind of axis of, um, you know, you can't say how good something is, right? You have to pick. It could be your interest in all of these things, but are you interested in, for example, how good quality is? If you're talking about a piece of science, that could be how reproducible it is, uh, are you talking about the attention it got, the engagement it got? You know, did it reach a, a particular section of the public, or did it reach a piece of software for, um, uh, for genetics? Did, did it reach that audience, or did nobody else do it? Or did it have an impact? Did, did someone take that research and then do something interesting with it? And they walked through some of this stuff. So the point is that these are they're very closely related, but they're still independent. Things, right? You can have, uh, you can write the best paper in the world, but nobody might read it. Alternatively, you can have a terrible paper, and loads of people read it, and lots of attention. Even worse, you can have a terrible paper, but lots of people read it, and then it makes the way to government policy. <laughs> so, uh, and that, that happens, right? So yep. just recently, there's a, a Hungary, I don't know if you see this one, Hungary buying GM Foods, and it's based on these papers that kind of debunk. <coughs> But, you know, uh, the three things are connected. Different people care about different things as well. So, you as a researcher might care most about say, quality. Maybe the university cares more about the economic impact. Maybe the journal cares more about the summaries and how many uh, people are paying attention to this. So, why do people care about impact? That's the one that, that most people question. It's the new one that everyone always talks about quality. And that, you know, when we think about being assessed, um, that's what researchers assume they're being assessed on, this is how good is my work. But actually, it's not just about what the content is now, it's still about impact as well. The reason for that's pretty simple, it's going to be cut. If money's coming from the taxpayer, the taxpayer wants to know, not just is it good science, but is it science that's being applied and which you might have a detriment to someone else. So the content is not a stupid thing, but you guys don't really want to argue with this person as well. But that doesn't mean that I'm not interested in not just here in the UK, but the US and also in Australia as well. The problem, like I said before, is impact means different things to different people. So it's still like obscenity, you have a sense you know when you see it. Um, what is impact on one person is definitely not impact to another. So public relations would be a fantastic one to do that. Where maybe your fund is yes, you want you know, people to be thinking differently about this idea and that a scientist or a researcher. Why do I care about the end of my work? The one that's not really worthy. It's just for really the truth. Alright, so I'm going to speed through those two things. So, like I said, people think about quality. <coughs> Short of that, unfortunately, they think about quality that uh, I'm sure not people in this room, but some people think about is being published in an elite journal or a high impact journal. <coughs> So science papers appear in SSS, that could be a shortcut to quality. Or counting the number of citations for a paper. <coughs> the thing is that that's not necessarily measuring quality, right? That's, that really is a, it's a shortcut. What are you looking at is slowly influence. Lots of people read nature. Um, they're more likely to cite it, but it's not necessarily speaking to the article that they read. The impact factor of the journal is not speaking to quality of individual articles within that journal. And of course it is only scholarly influence. If you think about, okay, well I've got a piece of work and it's been mentioned in a document like one of these, so the guidelines for treating malaria, the, the uh, World Health Organization guidelines for treating malaria, or uh, this document from the human womb, kind of presented pay gap. So both of these are evidence-based documents, right? They're cool research, they're written by people who are familiar with the field, 
and they have a real interest in the site research. Um, but you don't get credit in the same way you get credit for pushing the journal for them. That cited by 519 and going cited by 519 journal, it's not cited by 519 policy documents. So that's the immediate criticism, which is why. Why is this not as valid as the, the, uh, the journal articles if we're talking about the kind of broader view in general? This is less relevant to software, but um, actually, the, the, probably the biggest thing for people working in software, people working in data sets, people working in arts and humanities. Um, and in the arts and humanities, I think they're equivalent. They're not necessarily to the things that they make in the World Health Organization guidelines, but they do reach people indirectly through things like trade books. So these books you know, sell hundreds of thousands of copies, depends on the number of the million copies. People read them, they're all then based on research, they can get knowledge, it's, you know, it's written as well, they all get something, but it is based on the research of each chapter is based on the research of a particular field that is bad that they feel really bad. They do something like think the past and slow, again, based on research, they don't feel bad. If my work has been cited there, it has reached hundreds of thousands of people. Indirectly, still. So, why shouldn't I get some credit? <coughs> and then finally, on social media. Um, a lot of people think about when our metrics first came out that we, we talk about leaving traces online. But the big one is obviously social media, which is a lot of people talking, and uh, Twitter and blogs and kind of thing, about academic research. And it's easy to kind of dismiss that and go, well, who are we saying? It's just sort of the title, or mostly the invitations of their chats, and that's kind of thing. Which is true, you can do, you can do that. Um, but there's also a real sort of <coughs> by the numbers of people sharing the titles as well. Uh, in amongst all those people reading the articles, there's evidence that somebody's picked up the work and used it in some way. So here, uh, the, this paper is quantified in terms of uh, anthropogenic global warming, it's a picture of basically how many scientists believe that climate change is man made. And it's being achieved by Barack Obama's account, or Barack Obama or Barack Obama's internal business account, his Twitter account, but nevertheless, that is being tweeted by him. Um, I've just realized, isn't that custom nature? I want to dismiss that. Anyway, so he's picked that up. Uh, I've been doing my green piece as well to answer somebody who say, well, scientists don't even believe that climate change is not made. Well, it's a different paper, and um, they do. So there's all these different kinds of measures we can, there's lots of other ways we can collect them. Uh, that's the point of this slide. But importantly, we can collect them in but it takes a human to interpret and put it in context. So that's why there's this, this no magic data. You can collect all this data, but all it does is give <coughs> you, as a person presenting your work, and you, that's how we want this, this data to be used. Um, or alternatively, the person is assessing some more, some more evidence to develop it. <coughs> In practice, what's this in nature of articles and the problems that people solve? So, for articles, what I'm measuring looks like is something like this. Maybe these little colorful donuts and what kind of things you can see there. Um, and you'll find them on different academic journals, typically it's working with publishers. And this uses two. So, here in Edinburgh, for example, there's access to it, all measure for, um, for staff. But, uh, we have these donuts, and when you click on the donut, you get brought to a page that shows everyone that's talking about the work that is being referred to. Uh, uh, I'll show you this stuff down here. And really, the reason publishers do it is, first of all, for this, you know, the assessment of the fun, but really for them, this is a bit different. They care about keeping authors happy, they need happy publication. And that's what all that work does, first of all. It's not necessarily Primarily used as a tool for helping you get credit. That's what we want. Um, it's primarily used, I would say, in journals for, and I mean this in the best possible way, for kind of ego. So uh, you publish something, it's completely 100% natural, I do all the time. Um, but when you publish something, you want to see what people are saying about it afterwards. Why else is natural? Um, and that's all this thing. Saying about it, what they think about things, what it's doing in the news, how it compares to other articles, and there's this kind of mess of more attention than expected. 
So it's, it's all facing the control. I mentioned fossil four, so here's another example of type C beyond the awful. So this time it's the thunder of the world that's doing something to control. So uh, this is a, it's an interesting paper. It's talking about how it's asking the question did industry uh, influence alcohol policy in Scotland? Um, by the alcohol and, and these people are thinking about it. It was funded by the Wealth and Trust. And the answer to this question, as I thought I paid for you, is yes, industry totally influenced alcohol policy in Scotland. Um, but it was interesting for the Wealth and Trust to find out who that message had reached. So they had a particular mission for this paper. Um, it may or may not be the same mission as the audience had. But they wanted to find out, um, you know, did it reach people in the business of the supermarket to change to the business of the And they were happy with the paper. I didn't know the trace, I didn't know the trace of the walls and things, and they could see for them, um, okay, this was treated by two MSPs and picked up by some, some lawyers in King's College, some sort of journalists in uh, Scotland. So for them, that was more evidence that what they wanted to achieve was the impact which came from the amount of time. They kind of reached the decision of the amount. I'll skip over this one quickly. Here's another sort of uh, about a paper about measuring the ozone concentration of the UAV. So this is the AHC in the clip through, and it shows all the mentions. And there's a policy document that works on this. It's a great literature from the UK government. A report saying, hey, you know, this paper is going to amongst other things, what's the capability of using the to measure methane emissions? And the authors find out about that. So this is the kind of case we want to see. The authors check their own metric things, they've seen they've got this paper, and they say, hey, that's good. I didn't know that before. All right, so that's the background of our metrics, how people use them in our reports. Where you can find this kind of thing. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how it applies to the software. So broadly, in my opinion, I'm not a funder. You probably are funders, but I'm not a funder. Um, but in my opinion, from what we've heard, these things. So first of all, funders are quite happy to treat software and data as a primary research item. It's an idea sometimes that. Oh, well, you know, until they have the ones, they still have records, they don't want to treat them as uh, primary research outputs. That's not necessarily true. Um, if you, you know, if you listen to talks by, uh, by Hefty or, or, or any of these kind of people, they say, no, <coughs> we're happy to accept them and things like that. Funders are also, they can tell the difference between quality and engagement and impact. So they can and we should as well. If you're looking to get credit for software, it's important. Remember, broadly speaking, since the, the rep exercise we did a couple of years ago, it's coming up again in a few years, they believe that case studies and qualitative data are the best way to convey some of these uh, you know, evidence of successful impact, evidence of successful behavior. So they're not looking necessarily for numbers. But there is this whole thing about, again, they say that people are, people don't treat software or case studies as primary research outputs, they also have sort of quality. Maybe the university cares more about the economic impact. Maybe the journal cares more about dissemination. How many uh, people are paying attention? So why do people care about impact? That's the one that, that most people question. It's the new one that everyone always talks about quality. And uh, you know, when we think about being assessed, uh, that's what researchers assume they're being assessed on. This is how good is my work. But actually, it's not just about what the funders is now, it's still about impact as well. The reason for that is pretty simple. The funding has been cut. If money's coming from the taxpayer, the taxpayer wants to know not just is it good science, but is it science that's being applied and which might have a detriment or something. So the funders are the that they realize that there's a lot of value in this situation as well. But that doesn't mean that I don't interest in impact as well. It's not just here in the UK, but the US and also in Australia. The problem, like I said before, is in fact we use different things to different people. So it's still like obscenity in that sense, you know it when you see it. Um, what does impact one person is definitely not impact another. So public opinion can be a classical thing to do that. Where maybe your funders is yes, if you want you know, people to be thinking differently about this idea, um, that a scientist or a researcher 
So for articles, what I'll mention looks like is something like this, is the end of the 
colorful bullets and all kinds of things you can see there. Um, and you'll find them on different academic journals, typically it's one of the publishers. And this uses two, so here in Edinburgh, for example, there's access to it all by um, for staff. But uh, we have these laws, and when you click on the donut, you get brought to a page that shows everyone that's talking about the donut. I'll show you stuff. Um, and really, the reason publishers do it is, first of all, it's you know, the assessment of the fund, but really for them, it's a bit they care about keeping all things happy the week after publication. And that's what all that is, first of all. It's not necessarily primarily used as a tool for helping you get credit. That's what we want. Um, it's primarily used, I would say, in journals for, and I mean this in the best possible way, for kind of ego. So if you publish something, it's completely 100% natural, I do all the time. Um, but when you publish something, you want to see what people are saying about it. Um, and that's all it was to do. It was good. So you can say you keep saying about it, good things, bad things, good experience in the news, how it compares to other articles, you know, it's this kind of mess of more attention than you expected. So it's, it's all things that you can draw from. I mentioned Boss before, so here's another example of how it's used beyond the author. So this time, it's the funder. This is a, it's an interesting paper, it's talking about how oh, it's asking the question did industry um, influence alcohol policy in Scotland? Um, by the other and an interview with other people. It was funded by the Wealth and Trust. And the answer to this question, as the scholar paid for you, is yes, industry totally influenced alcohol policy in Scotland. Um, but it was interesting for the Wealth and Trust to find out who that message reached. So they had a particular mission. Uh, it may or may not be the same mission as the other side. But they wanted to find out, uh, you know, did it reach people in the business of influence who can actually change the business of influence? And they were happy with the only thing they wanted to trace is the only thing they wanted to trace and they can say for them, um, okay, this was treated by two MSPs and picked up by some, some lawyers in this college, as well as a journalist in uh, Scotland. So for them, that was more evidence that what they wanted to achieve was the impact which came from the event. So they kind of reached the decision making in that way. <coughs> um, I'll skip over this one quickly. Here's another so, uh, about a paper about measuring the ozone concentration of the UAV. So this is the page you see in the clip here, and it shows all the mentions. And this policy is what it was, of course. It's a great it show that you know, the UK government. A report saying, hey, you know, this paper's come out, amongst other things, what's the feasibility of using the UAVs to measure methane emissions? And the authors find out about that through all metrics. And this is the case <coughs> case we want to see. The authors check the all metrics page, they've seen they've got this paper, they say, yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that before. <coughs> all right, so that's the background of all metrics, how people use them in articles. Where you can find this kind of thing. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how it applies to deep software. So broadly, in my opinion, I'm not funded. You talk a lot about this, but I'm not funded. Um, but in my opinion, from what we've heard, these things. So first of all, funders are quite happy to treat software and data as a primary research. It's an idea sometimes that. Oh, well, you know, until they have the UIs, they slowly recognize they don't want to treat them as uh, primary research outputs. That's not necessarily true. Um, if you, you know, if you listen to talks by, uh, by Hefty or, or, or any of these kind of people, they say, no, <coughs> we're happy to accept them and things like that. Funders are also, they can tell the difference between quality and engagement and impact. So they can really choose the one if you get them to get credit for software. It's Remember, broadly speaking, since the, the rep exercise we did uh, a couple of years ago, it's come up again in a few years, they believe that case studies and qualitative data are the best way to convey some of these uh, you know, evidence of successful impact and evidence of successful behavior. So they're not looking necessarily for numbers. There is this whole thing about 
again, say that it's a well, you go through some direction that says, oh, we see cycles. You also say, well, you know, it's not for high impact matter. Um, or, so I need to work with cancer, or I need to publish in this journal. That's all true, but none of that thunder that I say. Right? That's within researchers. It does happen, right? it absolutely happens. And it's a bad thing, it's not necessarily hot. And but what they do want is evidence and context. So they want evidence to back up. So if we want to get the head interview, what should we do? Well, of course, we have to make a case for it. That's the unfortunate, we have to do the work part. We should remember the differences between equality and engagement <coughs> and impact. And we think about we should ask ourselves, okay, I want to get credit, ask yourself what do you want credit for, and what are the people who are submitting this evidence to uh, care about, and tailor that. And you need to support the claims with evidence and context. So, where our metrics do help, ideally, is providing some of that evidence. We need to sit through it and pick out the bits that are interesting. The least we can make is like a collection of that data. Easy for you. The context comes by comparing to other uh, outputs of the same age and the same type of subject field in this group. That's a lot harder for software to get for our course, uh, partly just due to the lack of sanitized metrics. <clears throat> so, if I said, well, our metrics tools can maybe help with evidence, if I said, remember the difference between quality, engagement, and impact, what are the indicators of quality for software development tricks? Here's two. So we, we don't know. I don't think any other of it would be either. The reason we don't do it is because it's hard. It's a hard problem. Um, and uh, I think we're still learning. This is a fun place. Like, you actually in the course of doing it. Get a chance to talk to some of you and tell me what these uh, indicators are. But quality, I think, is the hardest of hard problems. Indicators of quality are fairly certain things, even for our place. What is a good measure of quality? Short of the scientists can re reproduce the experiments. Um, there's some very low levels of this that just doesn't have any statistical errors, uh, statistical quality errors that can be found. It's exactly the same software. So, what, what would they do? You could say, well, they test coverage, yes. They can go through a code review, you can do an external or independent code review, maybe. Uh, it could be something as simple as does anyone actually complain that it doesn't work? That's an indicator of something. And then finally, and I couldn't say not exactly the answer, but just a genuine question. Do you really want to? Uh, and this is a, it's a bit of a code based question. But I, do we as researchers really want to commit to the same levels of QA and code review as we do our That's not, It's a non trivial thing. I'd say so. We, at our metric, we need to a commercial software development team, which I also do, so I think we hire a lot of people at the university, we've got a big team, but, um, and it's always the same, like, when we come from academic software, not really very good at development, but you're lacking some of the practices around code review, QA, professional software development, for example, team members. So, you know, there's pros and cons. The plus side is supposed to provide produce higher quality software, and the second half of the thing is you can't kind of go and go for it. It's encouraged in academia, but kind of discouraged in commercial software. For engagement, beyond what we've talked about for our course, you know, what kind of indication is for software? Software being highlighted into a blog or a mailing list, uh, the number of times mentioned, like I said, the number of times downloaded, the number of times start form, this kind of thing. Potentially, the thing to remember about the quantitative um, elements of engagement are things like this. So, how many of you are familiar with the tree finder and the stuff that happens around here? Okay, so, this paper, this piece of software has papers associated with it. Papers have quite high metrics. So, it's like, and this is lots of people paying attention to them. You say, oh, well, that's good. Okay. So, the problem is that Attention can be good or bad. I can't tell from the number alone, that's why you have to have this quality of data. The reason TreeFinder has a lot of attention is because it also takes the license for software to say you can't use this software if you're designing any of these code in places and countries, which is the default in the EU and the 
U.S. Um, this work provides the opportunities to work directly in Thailand. So that's not necessarily the attention you want to get. I uh, think cooperatives uh, are supposed to be attracted to the political process. And the software is no longer available, people are still there. So there's a data there, right, that we don't rely as much on, on numbers on policy measures. So that's why the case study approach and the supporting the therapies can be a single number of different numbers. I'm going to end up on a, on a positive note. So impact is another interesting one. So we talk about the people who've taken this off and done something with it. This is, um, it's not applicable to all types of software, but it's interesting nonetheless. So, um, Depsy.org. So Depsi was actually created, it's a, a project um, funded by the National Science Foundation in the States, but it was actually written by Jason Green and Edward Bourne for uh, the founders of Impact Study, which is before the same Jason of the Biometrics Manifesto. And what Depsi does is it goes through GitHub for, I think, well, Python hackers, and Python and R, um, and it looks for dependencies between different projects in the GitHub. What that means is you can take you can type in the name of a package, say by Python, for example, and you get back a page like this. So it's doing a few different things. Uh, one is it's looking at I buy the repository and it's saying how many downloads it's got. Is the evidence there? It's putting it in context as well. So by Python is one of the most popular packages in the NG Center. It's doing some search over open access text on the public central. Um, and the uh, Astrophysical Data Service, which does, it includes our kind of thing, but say that's all equivalent to maths and computer science. Um, again, it's kind of the start of the citations there, which is the top, the most highly cited social platform for Pepsi. And then, importantly, it lists under reused by lists all the packages on GitHub, all the projects on GitHub that include BioPython as a package that follows the language. So, the idea here is that you work by Python, you can go open it. Maybe we have a publication in, um, uh, I don't know what you um, the, you think it has a software issue or something, uh, and it's got 20 citations, but actually the package itself is referenced in all these significant <coughs> places of public central. So, I should use this. So, the citations there is not in the bibliography, that's in the Materials that is looking for fire so it can get the text. Uh, the software itself is being used in all these different places. You can now download it as many times from all these different projects using it. So you've had an impact on it. We work on that core piece of software. It didn't solve any scientific problems or anything, it's not very published in nature itself, but it's contributed to all these other applications that are helpful to researchers who want to work with it worldwide. Alright, so I've covered quite a lot. I'm going to wrap up. There. I don't want to have a panel discussion because it's too much to talk to you. But thanks for listening. Thanks very much, Ewan. Um, the questions on the top is there. Yeah. Hi, nice. so um, thanks for this talk. Um, I have one, com one comment and I have two comments. I'm not happy to do this one. The first comment is that. It may be possible that others uh, begin to appreciate the impact of uh, software, but I don't think the scientific community mm -hmm. does appreciate that. Particularly, you know, these by investigators and by others, they, they, they don't think software is enough. That's my comment. The other thing is, uh, how does one maximize the impact one has? Yes, but you're talking about how do you gain all the Yeah, I mean, it's not like okay, this thing. So, um, I think I'm sure you guys can share some tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't have any tips for my question. Impact, probably, is again, alternative impact, if you want it, that's what I'm going to get out of Generally, what I would say is that if you don't talk about your work, nobody else is going to talk about it. It's bad enough for general articles where, supposedly, as part of your communication feed, they're going to send me a problem. They don't need to send it for you. So it's in the detox, that's pretty much what you can expect. It's going to be even worse for software. The onus is on you to be deeper, to push it out. 
not money, but not the kind of I'll pay ten dollars to ten thousand people to be treated for it because that's kind of him at all. And it becomes obvious the more you you did try to get a case study by the way, looking at beyond the number of later Casinos and people with teams and people bars and things thinking about this subway package. That's very obvious what's happening. Um, and we, that, we see that kind of thing quite a lot, relatively. Um, so, yeah, in terms of a bit back, I unfortunately don't have any suggestions on how to take the initiative yourself. <laughs> so, it's a good question. How do you, how do you use stock? Because you talked about so you sort of say, uh, you notice that maybe some Twitter users are not as equal as other Twitter users. Yes. So, so how do you deal with that? Yes. Or is it secret? No, it's not. Uh, well, yeah, it's an even first of all, I don't know it's uh, It's not a secret that what we do is just watch for anomalous patterns. So it's very unusual for research articles to have 10,000 views and no attention anywhere else. That's like a massive red flag. So that having, having this basket of metrics is the primary defense test that you can spot things to work at all. And even some of the things, but most research does not get that much attention. It's not like you have to watch um, you know, two and a half million experts a year, because actually it's only really 10% of them that get you know, significant, significant amounts of attention. So you can kind of look at that at that point. Questions for you? Uh, yeah, at back. In terms of the debt suplex, so one of the three things is that a lot of it has a trait that you work with in terms of what I is doing. Uh, it's an open source, and other than the PEI, you can't get them to do it open source, and therefore those are breaks in that, in that network of uh, which uh, of, of citation and where citation, citation, citation is, is, a, is a from involved statement, right, which is the deadly kind of thing. You don't see that close up. Yeah. So I, I, right. And then I think that, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a, I mean, it's not just commercial software, it's also paper papers. Right. Uh, I know, in fact, not even just paper papers for references, but in some of the elementary states that put in front of sources, um, you know, that data is also commercial. I mean, it happens that if you have an API, you might have to license the image from Google, but they do change. Facebook, we start Facebook, uh, all this. At the moment, we only uh, collect public Facebook data. So if you have a number, we say there's maybe five blogs or ten tweets, we always have to be able to see those five blogs and see those ten tweets. That's going to be the, the basis for it. Um, and we used to do more Facebook recently. Very hard to do that because they are data and it doesn't belong to the users, it belongs to them. Um, cut off the spot, so now we only get pages uh, from groups. Um, and there's nothing to stop any of these other sites to do. Particularly tomorrow, we're going to have some guys who decide how to use the hard platform and kind of cutting off all these uh, data. So, yeah, all of this, yeah, it's always going to be a black hole. Any other questions for you? Oh, I'm going to ask you one last question before we leave this panel. So you've been involved in this area for some time now. And from a historical perspective, what do you think has changed significantly in the last I think, so uh, weirdly, I think research moves very slowly. Um, well, I'm not saying research. Research moves very fast for the people doing research on the infrastructure, the organizations around the place. But uh, I think, actually, in the past sort of five or ten years, this assessment, uh, in the arena of assessment, has moved very quickly. So I don't mean just on metrics, but you think about things like the, the uh, Declaration of Research Institute. So I don't know if you've seen the Dora. Document. So this was a group of journals and societies in the US coming together, telling up and saying, look, 
that still these new math factors that still make it at the uh, general level, that still make it at the level, and then also like just this responsibility, the responsibility and transparent about this kind of thing. And that, you know, I'm just going to come out with the fact, uh, especially. But that one for whatever reason, it's a pain of card, and a lot of people say that it's still a kind of world of momentum. So I think it's a, uh, here in the UK, the problem with that kind of this is the um, it's now recommended that all universities in the UK sign up to go work. So that's in the space of about three years. It seems like a long time for anyone. Normal. And, but in academia, too, that joint will not happen to every UK university to sign up to do this. It's a massive situation. Um, a lot of it's driven, I think, again, by this impact agenda and the recognition of the funding is probably like how can we just sort of jump in? And the general public is worth spending money on this kind of thing. That means we have to measure impact, or assess impact. If we have to assess impact, that means this is the goal of this kind of trickle down effect. It ends up affecting a lot of different things. Um, so, yeah, I think attitudes in general have changed. 